Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another knife review for you. Today we have the Wee Knives Snacks Mini Buster. I'm saying snacks because that's how everyone else says it. S-N-E-C-X. If you do not know about this custom builder, uh, yeah, their knives go for a lot of money. This is a limited production collaboration with Wee, but their customs, five digits all day long when they do auctions on Instagram and stuff. They are very, very expensive. And it's not hard to see why. I'm not hugely into the custom world, but man, they do some really innovative, really cool, amazing stuff. And this production version is really no exception as we get into all the reasons why it costs $289, which for something with a Snex name on it, which does have the, the name on it, uh, not bad at all. And it does have a lot of very innovative features that you would see on the customs. So uh, very cool. Very happy to get my hands on this. Thank you very much to Stasa23 for loaning this to me. I'll link to his channel down below. If you don't know about it, you should definitely go check him out. He's He really helped me out when I first got started. He's forgotten more about knives than I'll ever know. Love the guy. Very happy he loaned this to me. But he wouldn't sell it to me. Uh, spoiler alert, I like this so much. I tried to buy it from him because it's 400. I thought they were all gone. Uh, but he's a big meanie poopy head and would not sell it to me. But I did manage to get one from someone else. And the reason why I'm doing this video today, I'm bumping it up ahead in the schedule. They are available at Knife Center. I saw them. They're, both versions are available, both in this just plain gray. And then there's also like a black, kind of black washy version for 289 bucks. Well worth the money. I if I hadn't already had a deal made with somebody to buy a used one, I would have I would have jumped on one of the new ones. It's a it's a it's a pretty cool little knife, absolutely for sure. Not that little, actually, which leads us to some specs and size comparisons. Segways. Uh, we have half inch squares here, so I'm trying to line it up. We have an overall length of eight inches, a blade length of three and a half inches, blade stock thickness pretty thick at 0 0.16 inches, but you can see it's it's mostly a Full flat grind. You have a handle thickness of 0.51 inches and a weight, according to my scales, of 3.94 ounces. And it's 3.94 ounces of very, very pretty, I will say. Uh, Snex is known very well for their machining, and it is, oh, I can see why. This thing is gorgeous inside and out. Blade finish is that typical we sort of, I've, I've heard that it's vapor blast. I'm not sure, but I haven't verified that kind of vapor blast finish. Um, I really like the look of it. I think it looks cool. Uh, I had a Wii Wasabi. I miss having that around. I really need to get another one. I see they are available on a couple places still, so I do need to get one of those. That was another limited run. Um, just beautifully done machining. Look. We'll start with the inside. How about that? We'll go backwards. I hope this is going to show this. But the inside of this is just so well milled. I did not take this apart because it's not mine. Uh, and I try not to do that when they're not mine. But there is a whole lot of machining going on in there. Very, very cool. This backspacer, holy crap. I can't imagine how long that takes on the milling machine. And I like that the finish is not exactly the same. They're both titanium. But I like the finish is not exactly the same as the scales. But so much multi-axis finishing going on there. A lanyard hole that does not ruin the knife. You have a complete through hole here. Hello. Yeah, it's just gorgeously made knife. It's just, it looks beautiful. Look at that pocket clip. The pocket clip's great. And it's we. You know they did a good job with it. And they absolutely did. Very unique feature on this, too, I want to point out before we get to size comparisons. Uh, they combine the lock bar insert and the detent ball into one pin. Kind of unique. Works really great. It give, does give it a very unique feel. We'll talk about that more as we go on. A, a unique feel that I really like, but it's it does have definitely kind of a very unique feel. Uh, but... Just nice little touch, and that's something you see on this on the Snex Customs. It's just kind of cool to see that in a production knife, a uh, limited production knife. They're only making 400 of these as far as I know. So let's do some size comparisons. We'll start out with our usuals. We have your Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and the Para 3 Lightweight. So 
so you can see for a three and a half inch blade it's it's actually not that gigantic it does not want to sit up proud for the videos there we go and now we will bring out our full-size Benchmade Griptilian and the full-size bug out So you see, really, in overall length, it's just a little bit bigger than a bug out. Actually, in almost every dimension, it's just a little bit bigger than a bug out. And now we'll bring out some other kind of titanium frame lock knives that this, in a few ways, reminds me of. Not completely, but we'll start out with another. This is a sheep's foot, but close enough. Warncliffe, uh, this is the best tech malware. A little bit shorter than that. Benchmade Anthem. A little bit smaller than that. I'm trying to line the pivots up here, but I'm not doing a good job of it. And a couple of newer ones. I've well, not one's not that new, I guess. Uh, we have the uh, Hinder Jurassic, new in that I rarely use it for size comparisons. Because, yeah, it's about the same length as the Jurassic. And just got this in the Blade Runner Systems BRS Apache. A little bit longer than that. Now let's talk about this blade. Yes, very thick blade stock for sure. 0 0.16. Not like, it's not like insane, like, you know, hide your kids thick. But it's, it is thicker than you usually see on an EDC knife. But it is only 17 thousandths behind the edge, as you kind of expect from Wii. They always are very thin behind the edge. I still found it to be a pretty decent slicer, even at that thick of blade stock. Is it the sliciest thing that has ever been invented? No, but it's not bad at all. And you do have a very robust tip on that. It is a sheep's foot. It's not meant for piercing, but you got a pretty good tip there. If you angle it right, still going to be a pretty good piercer. 20 CV steel. Clearly no issues there. Uh, no... I, I like the blade on it a, a fair bit. I, I am kind of getting used to thicker knives. I used to always want really, really thin blade sock, but you know, I've been I've had this nasty hinderer addiction and stuff lately, and I've just been kind of into bigger knives, Spartans and stuff like that. So I guess the blade stock thickness doesn't bother me as much as it probably would a couple of years ago, uh, but still pretty darn slicey. And of course, it's a wee, it's razor sharp out of the box. They do a really good job. Uh, no issues there. Ergonomics. Um, Pretty darn good. Uh, the pocket clip, I can definitely feel. Not going to deny that at all. Uh, in this little choil up here, unless you have little tiny, like, baby monkey fingers, I don't think you're going to be able to use that as a choil. I would not recommend it. Uh, but I can get all four fingers on it pretty good. Can definitely feel that pocket clip. But it's not uncomfortable. I wouldn't call it a hot spot. But I definitely know it's there. Same can be said for back here, you know, where the lanyard hole is can feel them, but they're not bad. They don't really bother me a whole lot. Uh, I do like where the jimping is placed, and also there's this, also this little cutout on top of the blade. It's just a good place to rest your thumb when you're bearing down to do stuff. I do kind of like that. Uh, as far as the carry goes, I do have a bit of an issue with the carry, and I can't figure out why it is, but it slides in on the pocket well. The pocket clip tension is, is just about perfect. Um, it, it slides in and out good. It doesn't stick out a whole lot. It sticks out a little bit, but it feels bigger in the pocket than it is. It's just, I think it's just that, again, that lanyard hole. Lanyard holes, screwing stuff up for everybody again. It does have a very minimalist flipper tab, so there's no issue there. You know, no kind of pocket peckeriness or anything. Uh, but you can definitely feel it. And the weight is not insignificant. At four ounces, it's above that ounce per inch magic line, but it's not crazy. Um, but it carries fine, I guess is the way I would put it. It carries fine, just like the Ergos. I'd call the Ergos good, not great. I'd call the carry fine. Um, but as far as the action goes, that's where this thing redeems itself to me. It is just very unique. I don't know how to really describe it. It's a fluid, just the detent, of course, is perfect. It's made by Wii. They always nail that. And it just has, it's just so smooth. It's not totally guillotine drop shut, but
but it's close to it and man, it's smooth. Whether it's the bearings, it's the detent, the shape of the detent ball. It's just, I love the action on this thing so much. Doesn't make that satisfying of a sound. I wish it had a bit more of a metallic-iness to it, but that's, you know, that's just me. I'm kind of a sound snob, but uh, I love the action on this. It's it's just addicting. I just, and that's, that's why when uh, Stasa said he wouldn't sell me his, I posted complaining that he wouldn't sell me his, hoping that someone on Instagram would say, hey, I have one, and it happened. Somebody did that, so... I am getting one of my own, and uh, it's it's one that I'll keep for a while. And I have to say, congratulations, Wii, because for a long time there, I didn't have any actual Wiis. Uh, I had a lot of Civivis. Now in 2020, one I added back that was from 2019, uh, the uh, Fair and Forge Design Malice. And then the Kite Fin is great. I'm definitely keeping that. And now I'm getting one of these. So I went from zero Wiis to three in 2020. So I good job guys you know you're doing a really good job uh i i really like this and i know there is no way ever ever that i will own an actual snacks they're so expensive and not only they're expensive but you have to like jump on an instagram auction at a random time and hope that you get one uh now yeah this is limited production but 400 is not an insignificant amount of them and uh, yeah, it's nice to just be able to get one for a reasonable human being price. And um, I'm happy to have my hands on one. It, it, will it be one I keep forever? I Probably not. I don't keep limited stuff for a terribly long amount of time. But I want to spend more time with this than Stasa was going to allow me to. <laughs> so I got one. And uh, I'll have it for a while. And who knows? Maybe it'll be something I carry a lot. And I carried this one a lot. Sorry, Stasa. It, it has been carried a lot. It's been in my pocket a bunch. It's just beautiful. And it's just nice to have something this pretty in your pocket and with that action that is so addicting. I've never held a real Snacks, so I can't say if it's better or worse. But man, it would have to be really, really, really good to be better. Because, man, it's just so smooth. I could just sit here and flip this for the next 15 minutes, but that would probably bore all of you. So let's end this video now. And I will say... Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you have a good one. I've been Brian. Talk to you later.